Hello, I am Pastor Ernest L. Dees with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministries. As always, I am honored and humbled to share with you what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you now. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for undergirding us. We thank you for being the wind beneath our wings. And Father, we thank you for being able to see, amen, the light at the end of the tunnel. Now, Father, we pray that this Bible class bless someone, bless all our hearers. Just we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. I thank God always for our church members here at Agape, those who have partnered with us, as well as all of our well wishes, amen, and supporters throughout the United States and the world. Before we get into our Bible class tonight, we want to share with you just a few announcements. First of all, there will be no in-service service here at Agape this coming Sunday. However, you can tune in, amen, to our service virtually on YouTube, Facebook, or our website. Also, uh, on the 12th, 31st of uh, this month, we will have a virtual New Year's Eve service. You can tune in again with us on Facebook as well as our web and YouTube at 8 p.m. Also, uh, Elder Coleman wants me to make sure that I share with you because he is in charge of our prayer ministry. And God bless him. And he, dear members and friends, as we are approaching a beginning of a new year, we have an imperative, amen, from God, that the people of God reset our minds, and hearts, and focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 145, 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Therefore, the prayer ministry is calling for a 21-day fast, which will begin January 4th. May the Lord in return speak to our hearts and give us wisdom, amen, direction, and purpose to fulfill his will. More details will follow. Thank God for those announcements, and may we govern ourselves accordingly. Today we want to talk to you from the thought, the principle of worship. The principle of worship. Now, as always, I want you to keep in your mind that Jesus is coming. And I keep saying that because Jesus is coming. All of the signs of the times are telling us that Jesus is coming, and I definitely do not want you, amen, to be left out and not be included when God catches up his church and take us all back with him to be with him in glory. Our scripture lesson is coming from St. Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, and also St. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And I want you to follow along with me, if you will, and get your Bibles out. This is a Bible-based church. Amen. You can follow us in the word of the Lord. I'm reading from the NIV. Matthew Amen. chapter 4, verse 10, reads on this wise. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God 
and serve him only. That was Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Now, if you will, look with me over in St. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. Read on this wise. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, swaddling clothes, and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been Told. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word, talking about the principles of worship. I want you to keep in mind um, this particular verse as we go through our lesson tonight, coming from Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And it says something on this order, on coming to the house. They saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let your imagination kind of Imagine these wise men falling down before Jesus and bringing a gift and offering a gift to him worthy of a king. I want you to keep your mind on this thought as we move through this lesson. And that is, God alone shall receive worship. Thank you, Jesus. We shall worship him because of who he is and because of his great love for humanity. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I am a firm believer that godly love is the foundation for giving and worship. Godly love, a foundation Amen, for giving and worship. Now, why do we enjoy giving gifts so much? Perhaps it stems from our love for people as well as 
We just want to see others benefit from our generosity. That's a good reason to give. Love, giving, and worship somehow just seems to go hand in hand. Remember, we are talking about the principle of worship. Now, if we love, we will give. And we will worship. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Love is the foundation at the root of both giving and worship. God so loved the world that he gave his very best. Think about that. God so. Now, how much love is in that word so? Immeasurable. For God so loved the world, he gave his very best, and that was his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, as a sacrificial lamb that died on Calvary's cross for your sins and mine. Are we following Jesus' example of giving our very best? Are we? Are we following Jesus' example of giving our very best? Giving begins with love. And the worship of God begins with love. Now, during this holiday season, many people get all bent out of shape over others observing long-held traditions. And y'all know that's true. Now, while there may be some valid concerns, let's not forget the bigger picture. The bigger picture, amen. The people love to give gifts to those that they love, and they love to celebrate the birth of the one who gave his very best. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He gave it to us. Because of what Christ did on Calvary, we love to celebrate him and his love for us by giving to his cause and by worshiping him. Father, I thank you for what you did through Jesus Christ on Calvary's rugged cross. Now, upon the birth of Jesus Christ, a heavenly host sang and shared the good news to the shepherds in the field tending their sheep. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. They dropped what they were doing. They made haste and found Jesus just as the angels, amen, said they would. Thank you, Jesus. Now, this season, you know, I thought about a saying that Jesus Christ can be birthed or born a thousand times in Bethlehem. But if he is not born within us, we are, all, we are of all people most miserable. Has Christ Jesus been born within you? Have you been born of the Holy Spirit? This season, the occasion is just right for you to drop what you are doing and recommit your life to Jesus Christ. Yes, it is. You can drop what you're doing right now and recommit your life to Jesus Christ. Or... For the first time in your life, commit your life to Jesus Christ by obeying the one whom you say that you love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You say you love Jesus so much? Commit or recommit your life today. Jesus said, if you love me, you will do as I say. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Show your love today by obeying, amen, obeying Jesus Christ. He showed us his love, amen, on Calvary's cross. And he continues to show his love to us every day. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for the opportunity to worship you. I thank you for the opportunity to bow down before you. Hallelujah. And give you praise. Bow down before you and thank you. Worship you. Adore you. Lord, I thank you for that opportunity. According to St. Matthew chapter 2, verses 3 through 8, it teaches us the majority of the people, amen, that Jesus came to save was unaware that he had been living among them until a group of outsiders, amen, came looking for him. Isn't that something? Only then, amen, did those the prophets had foretold of his coming to try to find him. That's, that's the only time they begin to try to find, amen, this Jesus Christ. When some outsider came looking for Jesus. I want to say to you, yeah, I want to say to you church members, Jesus is coming back. I want to say to those who have not committed their lives to Christ, Jesus is coming back. Are you looking for him? Are you expecting him? We find in Hebrews chapter 9 around verse 28b, it tells us, amen, unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Lord, I thank you. I'm looking for you, Jesus. I'm expecting you, Jesus. Any day, any hour. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you looking and expecting for Jesus to come? <clears throat> are you? If you are waiting for someone to tell you that he has come, it will be too late. He is coming as a thief in the night. In a moment and in the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible. Father, I thank you. And we shall be changed. Hallelujah. Now, you can't wait until the last trumpet sounds before you accept, amen, Christ Jesus. You won't have time to repent of your sins. You won't have time to be baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and receive the blessed gift of the Holy Ghost. If you wait till that last trumpet sounds, now is the time. Tomorrow is not promised to us. Yesterday is gone forever. God has given you this moment this time to say yes to your Savior. The interesting thing about it is the day is going to come whether people like it or don't like it. Every knee is going to bow before Jesus Christ. And they're going to bow and give him praise and worship until God is satisfied. I'd rather bow on my own out of adoration for him rather than being made to bow. The proud is going to bow. The stuck up are going to bow. Amen. Every knee is going to bow. Everybody. Before the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the Holy Spirit, amen, the Holy Spirit 
is the new birth. When we receive the Holy Spirit, receive the new birth. But I tell you one thing. Amen. We won't have time because he's coming in a flash, in a, in a, in a blink of an eye. So now is your time to get it together. Now is your time to get it together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, as we retell the story of Jesus' birth, every year around this time of the year, we tell the story, amen, and demonstrate the principle of worship. Every time we tell this story, amen, we demonstrate the principle of worship. The wise men, the angels, and the shepherds all show us again and again the woman we are to worship. They show us, amen, the way we are to worship. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. They show us the reason we ought to worship. The wise men brought gold. They brought frankincense. And they brought myrrh. Now, you may not have any of these things. But there is something that you can bring before the Savior. You can bring a broken spirit. One that's not caught up in pride. You can come with humility. You can come with a broken and a repentant heart. And Psalm 51, 17 tells us that God will not reject a man, though, that come to him with a broken and repentant heart. Bring that before Christ. Thank you, Jesus. We can offer the fruit of our lips. Oh, yes, we can. We find in Hebrews chapter 13, it tells us, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Lord, I thank you. If you never prayed before, if you never fasted before, if you pray sporadically, if you fasted sporadically, this year, the upcoming year, is a time to really, amen, start fasting, praying, and worshiping God. There may be some real rough days ahead, but if you are caught up in praise, caught up in prayer, caught up in worship, you can better deal with these days, amen that are ahead of us. We can bring the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks, amen, to his name. Father, I thank you. The foundation upon which all worship rests is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 5. Thank you, Jesus. It reads on this wise, Hear, O Israel, thank you, Jesus, the Lord our God is one Lord. When you worship that one Lord to be the center of your attention, there's no other worthy to be worshipped, bowed down to, and praised. Verse 5 tells us, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. What is left for anybody else? God is asking for it all. The God and God alone should our worship be. Thank you, Jesus. You know, this chapter, sixth chapter here in Deuteronomy, it describes who is the focus 
are objects of our worship, the Lord God. And it illustrates how worship is to be woven into every detail of our everyday life. Think about that. Worship is to be woven into every detail of our everyday life. Worship is far more than any act. It is a lifestyle. Let me say that again. Worship is far more than an act. Worship is a lifestyle. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are taught in Deuteronomy chapter 6 that children from birth were to be taught about God. Parents amen, were to use every occasion amen, that life gave them to teach their children about God. <clears throat> it was it was, it was to be taught, amen, and put on their mind the first thing when they get up in the mornings. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the last thing on their mind before they went to bed. Thank you, Jesus. They were to talk about it when they traveled. And were, to, and were to discuss it while they sat around the table and ate. Worship is more than an act. Worship is a lifestyle. They were to weave God into the very fabric of everyday life. Worship. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you now. I give you the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. It was to be emphasized. Yes, it was. The importance of worship and the object of our worship. Amen. In Matthew 22, 37. Amen. I thank God that Jesus emphasized the importance of worship in Matthew 22, 37. Lord, I thank you. He quoted Deuteronomy 6 and 5 of the Old Testament. He, Jesus Christ quoted that. If it was good enough for Jesus to quote, it's good enough for us. It's good enough for me. Thank you, Jesus. And, and Jesus said, he was talking to the lawyer. Thank you, Jesus. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might or your mind. There's nothing left for anybody else. Worship. Worship. God is, wants our complete attention. He wants our worship. Bow before him. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Adore him. He's worthy. He's worthy, y'all. He's worthy. Now listen. Regardless of how, amen, how many times or how time changes, regardless of how time changes or regardless of how much our culture advances, Jesus must remain at the center of all that we do. Let me say that again. Regardless of how time changes or our culture advances, Jesus must remain at the center of all that we do. Now, once upon a time, the horse and buggy was our main mode of transportation. Now, we have fast cars and jet planes to ride. Once upon a time, we had manual typewriters. 
Now we have laptops and iPads and the like. Yes, times have changed and cultures have advanced. But regardless of all this, Jesus must remain at the center of all that we do. Thank you, Jesus. The principle of worship. We must talk about Jesus when we get up. Each morning, talk about him. Just talk, 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 talk about Jesus. Praying, praying, praising him. We must acknowledge his provision at every meal. Some people just grab and start eating and don't even give God thanks. But Lord, I thank you for your provisions. I thank you for our daily bread. I thank you for our daily necessities. We must tell of his grace every evening. Thank you, Jesus. We must sing and talk and tell until worship becomes a natural part of what we do. Worship can become as natural to us as breathing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When we worship, we pray, when we give thanks, when we celebrate, it should be filled with joy and jubilation every time, as much as possible, especially by a born-again child of God who can really appreciate what Christ did for us on Calvary's cross. Father, I thank you. You know, our adoration of who God is and whose we are and his benefits towards us should be through the roof. Yes, our adoration for who God is and whose we are. I'm bought with a price. I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't mind shouting that through the roof. Thank you, Jesus. The expression of worship begins with obedience to God's word. The expression of worship begins with obedience to God's word. I'm reminded of an expression by a man named Oswald Chambers, and this got my attention. Uh, he wrote a book, My Utmost for the highest. He says something like this. Worship is giving God the best that he has given to us. Worship is giving God the best, amen, that he has given, amen, to us. Be careful what you do with the best you have. That's important. Let me say that again. Worship, giving God the best that he has given to you. Be careful what you do with the best you have. Think about that. Now I want to ask you a question. <clears throat> Is your best really given to God? Or is your best given to your job? Is your best really given to God? Or is your best given to your favorite sports? Is your best really given to God? Or is your best given to your spouse? Is your best really given to God? Or is your best given to a friend? Is your best really given to God? Or is your best given to your extracurricular activities? Is your best your quest for money? Is your best your quest for power and recognition? 
or is your best really given to God who gave it to you in the first place? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, in obedience to God's word, we must submit to those God has placed over us. While at the same time, we are being submissive to God, according to Romans chapter 13. When we submit to those that God has placed over us, we are being submissive to God. And that's part of worship. Thank you, Jesus. Let me just read Romans 13, 1 and 2 right quick. Romans chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is a rebelling against the authority. Let me read that again. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. That's powerful. Without submission to God's word and his authority, there can be no true worship. Well, Pastor D, say that again. Oh, yes, I will. Without a man being submissive to God's word, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And his authority, we can't really have true worship. Church attendance is a must, if at all possible. We find in, in Hebrews chapter 10, 25, the Bible teaches us, let us not neglect meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another. Thank you, Jesus. Especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. It is important for the body of Christ, the local assembly, to come together and function as a unit and not remain apart as a separate and individual parts. God wants us together as much as possible, when it's possible. Now, as I close, remember worship is a lifestyle and not a simple act confined to church services on Sundays or weekly Bible classes. Worship is a lifestyle. It is not just confined to church services on Sunday and weekly Bible classes. Just as worship is not confined to church services on Sundays, listen carefully now, neither are submission and obedience subject to time and place. I want to repeat that. Just as worship is not confined to church services on Sundays, neither are submission and obedience subject to time and place. Holiness. And the Bible says, holiness without no man shall see the Lord. Holiness, which is the nature of God, demands that we make right choices, regardless of where we are and who, amen, is watching. Holiness demands that we make good choices regardless of where we are and regardless of who is looking at us. Worship is a lifestyle. It's not simply an act. 
Follow me closely now. Married people should act married. Even when their spouses are nowhere around. The same rules for modesty apply whether a person is at the zoo, the mall, or in a coat room. Thank you, Jesus. Worship. Our worship is to God and God alone. And we cannot adjust it based on who sees us. We find in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, it teaches us, be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Watch how you carry yourself. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see, amen, your honorable acts. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. They will see your behavior, and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We say that worship is a lifestyle. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm asking you to please be mindful that Jesus is calling for all to be born again. Thank you, Jesus, of the water and of the spirit. And I'm saying to you today, and I'm praying to God that we have said something that will bless you, something that will pique your interest, Something that will, will, will provoke thought and something that will move you to appropriate actions. I ask you now to please do not forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, for more information on the salvation plan or plan of salvation, please feel free to call us at 678 759-8989. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you now. Speak to our heart. Give us a heart and mind, O oh God, to worship you, to bow down before you, to submit ourselves to you, O oh God. Hallelujah. And we're realizing, O oh God, that worship is not a simple act. But worship is a lifestyle. Help us to live, O oh God, so that you will be pleased with us and that we will have an eternal home with you in glory. In Christ Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you all.